this video, we will learn how to operate a rubber injection molding machine. Before starting the process details, we will understand about the main parts of a rubber injection molding machine. In principle, the rubber injection molding is similar to a compression molding process. The major difference is feeding process of the rubber compound. In compression molding process the compound fed to the mold remains in solid form and in rubber injection molding, it remains in semi-solid form. First step for operating the rubber injection molding machine is to arrange the rubber compound strips as per the part's specification. These strips are cut in the specified width with the help of a strip cutting machine. The width should be suitable to compound hopper size which is fitted in the machine. As mentioned earlier, in rubber injection molding the rubber compound is not fed directly into the mold. So, the next step is to feed the rubber strip into the feed hopper. There is a screw in the rubber feeder, which keeps on pushing the rubber compound towards the forward direction. With temperature. Compound viscosity is reduced and material is made injectable. Have a look at the internal mechanism of feeding rubber into the mold with the help of the screw system. The semi-solid condition of the compound is necessary to pass through the runners and gates which are used in a rubber injection mold. Generally, all the rubber injection molding machines are PLC based. Hence most of the operations are automatic. It is to be noted that the operator should always wear the heat resistant safety gloves while working on the machine. The part shown in the video is a metal bonded bush. Hence we need to place the metal sleeve before molding operation. To reduce the effective cycle time of the complete molding operation, the metal sleeves for the next operation are kept ready in a jig, during the current curing cycle. This helps in keeping the total molding cycle time shorter. Before starting the next production cycle, we need to clean the flashes left in the mold from the previous cycle. It is important to maintain the quality of the produced parts. The next step is to place the sleeves arranged in the jig, into the mold. These sleeves will be molded in the rubber part. After placing the metal sleeve, we need to press cycle start button which automatically start moving the mold plates to close itself. After getting the signal of cycle start, the machine will close the mold for curing. Now the curing cycle will be continued for the specified duration, as per the process specification. Based on the cycle time and sequence of the each step, the machine performs the process steps automatically. As recommended by the management, the actual process parameters should be verified during the production cycle. Any variation from the approved process specification should be brought in the knowledge of the supervisor, and the machine parameter should be corrected immediately. Let the curing process complete. After completion of the curing cycle, the mold will open automatically. As we can see, the rubber strips are converted into the desired part shape, and the produced parts are fully cured. Now we have to carefully remove the cured parts from the machine, since the mold will be very hot. Generally, mold of rubber injection molding are of good quality and hence deflashing is not needed in the rubber injection molding. If flashes are visible, then the cured part should be deflashed. The deflashing tool is selected based on the flashes to be removed from the cured part. Once the deflashing operation is completed, the parts are sent for further inspection, packing and dispatch to the customer. 
based on the customer schedule. Mm-hmm.